Hey guys, welcome to another MTM video. Today we've got a Mazda 3 that's in for an ESP light on the dash. Went for an MOT and it failed because of this light on the dash is an indication that you've got a problem with your electronic stability program, which is part of the ABS system. So let's go take a look. Using our diagnostic tool, we can go in and have a look at the trouble codes. The trouble codes that we are getting now is for the pressure sensor that's inside the ABS pump. So if we look at the live data for the ABS system, we can see what kind of pressure that sensor is reading. And if we look here at our live data, it's showing that it's well up in the red, it's too high for where it's supposed to be sitting right now, and it's not reading properly. Our only problem is, is that that sensor is part of the ABS pump itself, so it looks like we're gonna have to go ahead and replace it. The ABS unit is hidden behind the battery tray, so in order to get access we need to take off the battery, the securing strap that's holding the battery in, and the actual tray itself. The battery terminals are just 10mm heads, so you can just undo them and tuck them out of the way, and the strap is just two 10 mils as well. Head mills holding in the actual tray and then this will just come straight out. It's a little bit fiddly to get out but once you make sure that the cables are out of the way and that you're not fouling any of the loom it'll come out easy enough. So here's our ABS unit. There's a large multi-plug on the side but if you lift up the tab you can remove the multi-plug and you can check it to see if there's any corrosion. In order to remove the unit, we have to remove all the pipe work going to it. So using a 10mm spanner, we can undo all of these. This can be a slow process just because of how much room you've got actually to move. So I'll speed this up. There's only one 10mm holding on the framework of this ABS unit. So once you've undone that and you've undone these pipes, it should be free enough to come out. You want to be careful when removing this unit that you don't damage any of the hard pipes or any of the flared ends. Any damage here can cause issues when you want to reseal it later on. The only thing that we need to swap over to the replacement unit is the framework that mounts the unit to the car. At the moment, we don't have access to any dealer parts because of the coronavirus situation. All of my dealers are closed, so we can't get any of those new parts. So it means that we have to fit a second-hand part. Normally, when people fit second-hand parts, they can think it's a kind of plug-and-play situation. But ideally, once it's fitted, you should carry out a recalibration process to make sure that everything's right for your car. There's always a risk when fitting second-hand parts. This issue is a common problem for this ABS unit and there's nothing to say that this unit that we're fitting doesn't suffer from the same problem. You also want to make sure that any second hand part that you fit, all the serial numbers match up with the part that you removed, just to make sure that there's no other variant that you're fitting for the car. The refitting process is exactly the same as when we took it out just in reverse. We want to attach the framework and then we need to carefully line up the hard pipes up with the holes and the threads. Always start these threads by hand, again because these flared ends can be damaged quite easily, so you want to make sure that they're in correctly. If the threads aren't in properly or if they're cross-threaded or if the alignment is out for the pipes, then it won't seal properly and you'll end up with another leak you could potentially draw air back into the system and cause more problems when you're trying to bleed it. Some videos online show that as soon as you fitted the unit that you can plug it in and check the cords. I wouldn't recommend doing this because if you energize the system before bleeding it properly then the valves inside the unit can open or close and it can cause an airlock to happen even worse than it's already going to. So it can cause an even larger complication for when you're trying to bleed it later on. What we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this is correctly fitted. The multiplug will be in ready, but it won't be energized. And then we're going to try bleeding the system. After bleeding the system, we can also recheck to make sure that we haven't got a leak. And that's again made easier because the battery won't be in the way. 
Tightening up these 10 mils can be a bit, little bit tenuous and boring, but it pays off when you just take a little bit of patience and just make sure that they're all done up properly. When you're happy, everything's nice and tight and everything's clean, you don't have any excess fluid on the ABS unit, you can reattach the multi-plug. Now we're ready to bleed the system, so what we're going to do first is make sure that the reservoir is topped up with brake fluid. Okay, so with the car raised, what we're going to do is bleed the brakes. We always want to start furthest away from the reservoir. So on this, the reservoir is on the offside front, the driver's front. So what we're going to want to do is start at the near side rear, passenger rear, offside rear, passenger front, and then the driver's front. We wanna make sure that we've got all the air out of the system before we put the battery back on, and then retest them to see what our readings are. Each brake assembly has a little bleed nipple which you can loosen off, and then you can attach a brake bleed tool. This tool works by creating a vacuum and sucking out all of the fluid that's in the system for this one assembly. So it's able to clear out the lines and any air that's in those lines. Pipe work on the tool, you can see the actual air that's in the fluid that's passing through it, so you want to keep going until all the bubbles are gone. Because there might be an airlock in the ABS pump itself, you might have to carry out this procedure multiple times in order to make sure that all of the air is out of the system. Again, this can be a tedious job, but your patience will pay off. Remember to keep your fluid level topped up because you don't want it to drop too low and draw in air. When you're happy it's bled and you've gotten rid of all the air and that there's no leaks from your ABS pump, you can refit the battery. Now that we've bled the system and put the battery back on, we can double check everything on our diagnostic so we can look at live data and check our trouble codes. Our live data is now sitting great at zero, so it's within the parameters and our trouble codes are showing no faults found. So that is great and fault rectified. The light's also off the dash, but again, you want to take it out and road test, see how the brakes feel because even though you've bled the system, even if you've bled it multiple times, there still might be a little air pocket left in the ABS unit. So taking out and road test, really having a feel for how the brakes are working can give you an indication if you need to bleed it again. If you do press the brake pedal and still it gives you some weird readings on the pressure side of things, you can carry out a calibration uh, test on your diagnostic tool depending on what tool you've got, but this might be able to sort out your problem. Again, you're fitting a, either a second hand unit or a new unit, whereas the readings that they could be set to might be different for your car, so you want to recalibrate everything just to make sure that everything's fine for your vehicle. But that is it for this week's video guys, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope it's helped you and I hope it's given you a little bit more of an insight in what goes into some of these jobs that comes into uh, our workshop. But yeah, if you like videos like this and you want to see more, please check out the channel, please check out our other videos, we can go through our uh, playlists. If you have a particular brand that you are interested in, you can have a look through there. If you haven't already, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and the bell for you to get notified when we drop a new video. And if you want to check out more, please click here. Cheers.